I think that right now with the news and the kind of images that we get all the time, there's so much of narratives forming that that's doing so much of the propaganda machine in place, whether it's overtly or whether it's more subtle propaganda. Um, so I don't know where cinema really stands in all this. And it's something that I'm thinking about as well. Maybe it's not the answer you wanted. <laughs> When we started making the film, it was in our film school and at the time we didn't really know what film we were going to make. We just had a desire to shoot, so we were shooting. No idea what this film would be. It was in 2016, so it took a long time. And at that time we were interviewing a lot of our friends. Um, and inevitably when young people talk for a long time, the questions of love come up. And in India, love is very political. So, because even though there were people in their mid-twenties to late-twenties, this question of who you can be with and who you can marry is very much uh, determined by families. So, this was the kind of thing that was coming up in the interviews. And we had thought that we would have a film that was something to do with this. But then, as time went by and different protests took place in various universities, the film changed and a lot of our friends were shooting in different universities and they gave us a lot of footage. So over five years, we collected a lot of footage and it became like a growing archive of memories of our times. Priya. Kya tum ab bhi roz newspaper se article kaat ke rakhte ho? जब मैंने तुमसे पूछा था कि तुम ऐसा क्यों करते हो तो तुमने कहा था मैं भूलना नहीं चाहता अमाउंट ऑफ फुटेज वी हैड वॉज इमेंस इट वॉज अ लॉट सो दिस एंड कीपिंग सम ऑफ दोज अर्ली इंटरव्यूज इन माइंड वेर यू नो द इम्पॉसिबल लव स्टोरीज ऑफ सम ऑफ माई फ्रेंड्स वी डिसाइडेड टू क्रिएट अ काइंड ऑफ अ नेरेटिव ऑफ लेटर्स विच स्पोक about all the things that we had experienced. Uh, me and my co-writer, Himanshu, we wrote them together. We wanted it to also have this theme, feeling of this long night uh, that is encapsulating a long amount of time. And this was actually uh, uh, the idea that when I was discussing actually with my French editing consultant, whose name is Clément, but he also was saying that, you know, you have all this night footage and it feels as if, and I started thinking about this a lot, that this idea of a long night, and somehow I connected to it and the temporality of this sort of continuous five years, but still feels timeless. At least uh, there's a feeling that it could be any time as well. With the first part of the film, it's supposedly addressed to uh, this lover, but the lover could be any protesting student who has this contradiction of, uh, you know, resisting, say, a certain political ideology, but not looking within, or not looking within one's family, or not looking within one's relationship as the, the problems that are there in our society and without addressing those issues I don't believe that political change can happen. Uh, this is a democracy. People voted this government into power. It didn't come from thin air. If we don't strike, then everything is fine. Then why So the first part of the film is definitely a kind of criticism uh, growing slowly as she herself starts to recognize uh, these things. 
and the second part becomes more a reflection on everything that's going on and interestingly maybe you didn't notice but the film is in two languages the first part of the film is in hindi because she is addressing her lover who speaks to her in india we have very different languages right so uh, the person can be from uh, say west bengal and the lover can be from north india and they will not speak the same language so she will have to speak in his language which is hindi to be able to communicate but in the middle of the film she gives up speaking in hindi and she speaks her own native language which is bangla and she kind of reclaims her letters and doesn't want to communicate anymore with this person and communicates more for herself uh later on in the film सुनकर हम बहुत खुश हो गए और सब जोर जोर से उनके गाने गाने लगे जब प्यार किया तो डरना के यूनिवर्सिटी स्पेसेस इन इंडिया आर वेरी स्पेशली पब्लिक यूनिवर्सिटी द गवर्नमेंट फंडेड यूनिवर्सिटीज आर वेरी लिबरेटिंग स्पेसेस बिकॉज पीपल कम फ्रॉम वेरियस डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री विथ क्वाइट कंजर्वेटिव फैमिलीज एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम दे केन बी फ्री with it, whether it's you know intellectually politically or even with their bodies so the dancing was kind of a homage to that as well uh, what this university space provides for a lot of us university spaces were designed to remove certain inequalities in society which uh, actually didn't happen as it should have happened uh, they these that's why we talk about this in the film as well where there is discrimination in spite of everything that the university space is supposed to do there is still discrimination and this is very very worrying um for us so this is why these themes are brought up in the film as well um and it's also a bit self reflexive because even if you talk about a movement which is uh towards um equalizing classes if we don't reflect upon the question of other discriminations then it's really um we are going to be doing the same mistakes again and again we are not just fti now we are a national voice you like it or not we are a national voice and it's very important to be honest and genuine and to be obligated to that because i'm i i can see that in 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 maybe in because you're going to make films for uh, people outside the fact that i'm here is also a lot of privilege that i could make this film my class and caste privilege has allowed me and my mother to go to school so i have been able to go to school but there's so many women who don't have this privilege and for them it's 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 even more difficult so yeah it's i speak english it's already a currency for me to move ahead but there are many people who don't and it's it's tough well when you are in the protest in india if you are a woman protesting then the lady police is sent to come so this is how it is so we we always interact with the lady police so there's something that we've been thinking about also this kind of contradiction she's also out there out in the sun with us protesting and probably we'll have to go back and do double the amount of work that a um, her male counterpart will have to do because she'll have to cook and clean and send her kids to school and then come back again to the protest and stand over there so obviously there was we needed to talk about this as well uh but probably her child will also grow up and she will also have to go to university and if the fees are high it's going to be tough for her as well so i mean this is all the contradictions that we wanted to talk about in the film i understand food okay we shall fight we shall fight i understand food okay we shall fight we shall several fight. students academics and artists supported the strike where well, when we started shooting the film we were still in film school so we had a certain romance for black and white cinema that we had been watching whether it was the french new wave films or the czech new wave films and our film school also was set up on the erstwhile soviet model of film schools so we would get a lot of 
uh, films from the Soviet, that time Soviet Union, uh, like Eisenstein and this kind of thing. So we had a kind of a romance for 16mm celluloid and this aspect ratio of 4 is to 3. But so we started shooting like this, but over time we decided that we will keep this black and white image because the black and white made us feel a sense of nostalgia. Uh, but it wasn't really nostalgia for the past, but these few years that we had lived through, even though it was a very difficult time, there was still some kind of hope because so many people had come out to protest and be you know, part of resisting what was going on. And for us, that was really, really important. So we look at it with a sense of, um, that it was something that was, gave us a sense of a collective. So it's nostalgia for the present, maybe. <laughs> I'm really influenced by the writing of John Berger uh, and uh, the film of Chris Marker, obviously, um, was very inspiring. And um, I was always interested in this, uh, cinema that is in between fiction and non-fiction and maybe exists on a spectrum of these two uh, things that we so much want to define all the time and I feel there's no need to be so you know strong in one's thing of what is a documentary or what is the fiction because I think they just spill into each other so in that realm I'm very much uh, influenced by Apichat Pong's Mysterious Object at Noon Miguel Gomes, our beloved month of August, or Arabian Nights, and Miguel Gomes does this really well. Um, so these are some of the filmmakers that I that I really freed my mind uh, from the limitations of these definitions. Actually, what what's been really nice for me in France is that people actually come to the cinema to want to watch a film like mine. Uh, in India, I will not get distribution, not because of any themes in the film. Firstly, the film is experimental. It's a kind of a documentary. So it will be very difficult. Nobody will, no cinema will want to show this kind of film. Uh, maybe in some university spaces and some film festivals. Uh, so it's really for me very important that I can at least show it here in the cinemas because I think it's a film that that just works better in the cinemas, but most films work better in the cinema <laughs> than on a screen. Um, so, I don't know, I just think that there's a certain feeling of collectively watching a film with strangers and feeling something in that moment, which is very important. And that's what cinema has given me. And I just feel it's very, very important that we make sure that the cinemas remain and as a, as a space for us to come together to watch films.